All right, this is the Colossal Tech Cut 50, which is currently the cheapest plasma cutter you can get on eBay, sitting next to a can of Krylon for scale. A friend of mine ordered this a couple of weeks ago, and he got it within two or three days via UPS. It was $330 with free shipping, plus he dropped an extra $30 for some uh, additional consumables. You get everything you see here except for that 220 uh, three-prong plug on the left. There is a cord on the back of the machine, but you need to supply your own plug. On the back side, you get this hose, a couple of hose clamps, and some fittings. Uh, not that fitting. I had to supply that one to hook up my uh, air hose. You get the filter, and you get the regulator. You're going to want to use a lot of Teflon tape on this as it leaks uh, pretty bad, and I imagine that that hose is going to have to be replaced in the near future. So we'll move on to some cutting now, and this is with a 5 8 uh, plate that I'm using as a guide trying to give this uh, trying to get the straightest cuts possible to show you guys what this what this cutter can do and first we start out I've got some 18 gauge uh, steel and I've got the machine set at 10 amps uh, all the cuts we're gonna do today are on steel I don't have any aluminum or, aluminum or stainless or anything around so uh, you can see quite a bit of slag and we kinda had to go a little bit slower than maybe you would want so uh, this time uh, 18 gauge again but up to 20 amps and you'll notice that I'm moving a lot faster and it cuts a lot cleaner uh, we don't have nearly as much slag dripping off the end of it uh, this is a piece of what I think is 8 inch and I, even though I fell off the guide uh, while I was making this cut it ends up turning out to be a pretty good cut right now I've got the machine set at 25 amps And it seemed like that was going a little slower than it should, so here we're going to try 8th inch again at 30 amps. See if this is any better. Not bad. And here I've moved up to 5 sixteenths plate, and now we're at 40 amps. I'd also like to point out that the machine is setting at 50, somewhere between 50 and 60 PSI. That's what the manual says to set it at. I don't know if that's too high or too low to get a good quality cut, and I haven't bothered to see if I could find any kind of chart or cable online that would tell me uh, what I should have. So I'm open to comments if you guys think you uh, have a better setting for me to use. Here we've moved up to 3 8 plate, and this is 40 amps. And the other thing is the tip was already bad. Uh, kind of bad when I started this review and I'm wondering if that's why I'm getting so much undercutting. I'll show you what the tip looks like at the very end of this video and it's got kind of a, uh, a blown out hole and uh, you guys that know anything about plasma cutters can probably tell me if that's, uh, if that's definitely when you need to replace it. Uh, so there you saw 40 amps I couldn't get through the piece of 3 8 plate. A lot of slag coming off of it and so now we've got it up to 50 amps. Same piece of plate and you'll still see a ton of metal uh, dripping off the bottom of this. So the machine says that it's rated at one inch severance and uh, you're gonna see here in a minute that we can't get anywhere near one inch. So again, either the tip is bad or I've got the pressure set uh, incorrectly. Hopefully uh, somebody will tell me. And you'll notice you go too fast because suddenly you get a face full of sparks, which is really annoying. I think I do it here again. Just a second. Oh, maybe not. See that? I'm becoming a professional already. Once we chip the slag off, that actually cleans up and looks like a somewhat decent cut. And then finally, going in the opposite direction, I'm going to try to push through this piece of three-quarter inch steel. And just by looking at the... At the uh, I don't know what you call that. The tip, the nozzle, the flame is, it seems like it's not as hot as it was earlier and I'm wondering if that's because the, the hole on that tip has been has widened out. Maybe it's not focusing the, uh, the heat nearly as well. I don't know. Well, let's look at some of the cuts before I chip the slag off. That's the 18 gauge 20 amp cut. Or no, that was the 10 amp cut. Uh, that 10 amp cut had all the slag on it. The 20 amp cut was the cleaner one. Uh, that's a piece of 8th inch plate where I fell off the guide. Another piece of 8th inch plate, this was what was under the clamp. I'm not going to tell you guys whether or not I think it's good because you're going to disagree with me anyway, so let's just all uh, make our own decisions. 
Uh, that's a piece of 516 so with quite a bit of undercut. And another piece of 516 so that was under the clamp. Decent amount of slag on that one. Uh, this is going to be the 3 8 with the 40 amp cut that didn't get all the way through the plate as well as the 50 amp cut that finally did. And that's the piece of 3 8 plate that was under the clamp. I think if you hit that with a uh, angle grinder, you know, a sanding disc or something, you're going to have uh, pretty reasonable results. That's the 3 quarter. You can see we didn't even get halfway through that. And this is the 18 gauge again. There wasn't really any slag on there to begin with, so that's kind of a waste of my time and yours. There's the 8th inch plate. Looked pretty good. Uh, that's the 5 sixteenths. Turned out decent. That's vertical on the table. That's the undercut. Again, maybe the tip is no good. Uh, maybe it's my pressure setting. Maybe it's just my technique. Another piece of 5 sixteenths with quite a bit of undercut. The 3 eighths after a substantial amount of uh, chipping. Uh, that's the piece of 3 eighths that was under the clamp. And this is the, uh, I recommend you buy one of these. This is the chipping hammer I bought, probably at Lowe's or something. I'm sure you could get them anywhere else. Harbor Freight, Sears, Home Depot, whatever. There's the slag. And this is what the tip looks like. Maybe that's called a nozzle. I don't know. You guys know more than I do. This is my first plasma cut experience, really. So I think I'll do another review after I change the tip and do a little reading about technique. And uh, we'll use, uh, I'll go through th some thicker material and we'll see if we can't squeeze a little bit more performance out of this machine. Thanks for watching.